welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Oh, look at the little puppies. You know, they're so cute. They're so cute. Oh, I want, to, I want to tickle their ears and rub their bellies. But then I would be thrown in prison. No, if you do it really well, they won't mind it at all. But, but if they do mind it, then off with your head. Nah, they, they put you in prison where you are forced to rub their ears and tickle their bellies for your entire life. Hey, if they include three square a day, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> also joining us today is Jacob. Hey everybody. And I'm sweating hey. like the, like a dog because of the eight hundred years of unrelenting sweltering heat. Wow, that's hot. <laughs> Boys. So anywho, in today's review, we are going to review the 2021 My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Annual. I think that's how you say it. Yes, annual. So in this con- in this issue, Rarity, Big Mac, uh, Big Macintosh, Mod Pie, and Mage Spider Brook travels to the kingdom of the Diamond Dogs and try to fix the broken friendship between the between six royal sisters. Hmm. All right, then. Yeah. So, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, six royal sisters is not necessary. It, this could have boiled down to just two uh, being the elements. And so, it makes me wonder why they, they had to pad it with so many characters. It's an, it could have been an interesting parallel to uh, Celestia and Luna. But as it is, I feel like this was overcrowded. Now, a lot of folks comment on the redesign of the Diamond Dogs, but I find it an interesting evolution uh, and making them a bit more unique in their various looks. Plus, I can safely say after the pandemic, this is, or rather during the pandemic, this was the only one where the ponies masked up while traveling. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, topical. Very. Hmm. All right, then. and Jacob, what about you? Well, I've been dreading, uh, dreading on reviewing this one for a while now. Not just because it's a continuation of the overarching story that's a constant repeat of the premiere of Friendship is Magic, but also because I can already tell we're gonna get bombarded by dog puns throughout the whole thing. <laughs> what, what's wrong? Oh, about come that? on. Yeah, their bark is worse than their bite. <laughs> Silver? You're doing this on purpose. <laughs> Only because you're sniffing around. <laughs> uh, I, I think you're barking at the wrong tree. Rule threes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got it out of the system. You think? <laughs> but well, anywho... Uh... But anyway, let's see. Um, if you guys have not read this, wait. Did I ask everyone what is think about this yet, or did I just yes, pump you into? Did. Okay, cool. You did. All right. So, anywho, uh, if you've not read this comic yet, uh, pause here and go do so. We'll come back. So we start off the adventure with well, our heroes having a road trip. Uh, this time they're not playing the banjo like how they did with Pinkie Pie. But still, um, we see Mage and Big Mac traveling to uh, the Diamond Dog's kingdom. And Rarity at the station wagon? Coach wagon? Whatever you want to call it. Tells Big Mac to ride, uh, drive properly or drive safely because she doesn't want to uh, mess up her sweater. And Mage here just tells Rarity... Um, Rarity, why did we have two invitations to two different queens? And Rarity just says, ah, there's a glitch in the system. Don't mind it. And where's Maud? And upon asking where she is, she does the superhero landing. Ooh. With ground pound feature. I know. So, um, we see that she's been scouting ahead and checking some rocks and she's kind of happy because 
Uh, the rocks here are really amazing and they, she could do a whole dissertation on it. Yay. Also, uh, we see a, another diamond dog that is kind of their entourage and tells the ponies to go into the cart or whatever it is. And this is a red herring or th this is a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, bait and switch because, um, <coughs> sorry. Well, it's a go-kart. He no, calls no, no. it a go-kart. <laughs> so, uh, go-kart. Yeah. I know what, what I mean is like, expectations. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Thank you. Subverting, the expe subverting expectations. Yes. Because and I, hate that, well, I hate that term with every, every fiber of my being. I hate that term for what it's used. <laughs> Well, anywho, uh, we see that the diamond dog here just says, go, car, go, uh, car, go. So, oh. Cargo? <laughs> why am I, <laughs> why, why am I, why am I having flashbacks to Speed Racer? God damn it. Go, Speed Racer, go, Speed Racer, go, go Speed Racer, go. 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 Alrighty then, alright. So, anywho, um, he, he talks in, a pretty um well uh, simple uh, manner and the ponies end up in a well, mine mortal car. peril yeah 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 um they they they're dropped into a chasm and somehow are riding on a mine cart level from donkey kong yay and soon they arrive at the city of duh, 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 uh Canania 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 sounds like Canada Oh Canania <laughs> our home and native land uh now I'm singing in French <laughs> oh, boys I surrender <laughs> This is a stereotype <laughs> of the American pig. Oh boy! So, anywho, um, we are we we like I mentioned before, we arrive at Canania, and rarity is everybody is at wow, and Mage should just ask why are they two king two castles and two places? Like, what the hell is going on? And that's her been that that's been her whole shindig from the very beginning, and Rarity just says, "Ah, you don't ask." So when they arrive at the closest castle, <laughs> they're greeted by, <clears throat> uh, let's see, uh, they're greeted by Princess Moonbeam Twinkle Tails, uh, call her Moon, <laughs> and also Princess Ambrosia Muffin Buns, call her. Ember, oh man, this is you, you can't call her Ember. That name's already taken. That's really? Not the only, that's not the only name that's taken. Oh god. We'll Boom. see later. <laughs> yep. But uh, the, the 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 naming conventions for the dogs here are very interesting because we give our dogs really extravagant long names. Just to only call them Pookie. I hear the cat pookie. <laughs> uh, yes. So, anywho, they, they give introductions and uh, they show them around the castle and they're introduced to the queen. Uh, the queen is named Queen Gen Genio Genino Genino Light. Uh, well, Lantern Light. Lan Lantern Light, yes. Just call her Jin. For short. So, Rarity asks, um, what's wrong with you? You, you? you seem to be not feeling too well. And Mature just keeps asking, why the fuck are they two castles? <laughs> oh, boys. And um, as a showing of gratitude and friendship, uh, Jenny here gives Rarity or gives the ambassador of Equestria a really big rock. Which... I want a rock! Rock! 
da, 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 da. and uh, Rarity immediately falls in love. I have a strong feeling that Rouge the Bat is somewhere around here. He's gonna steal the man. I have. Emerald. A, <laughs> I have a feeling that Tom the Boulder has reason to be je jealous. Oh God! So I'm gonna pause here. Uh, Silver, what do you think? Uh, mind if I start uh, on this one? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, go ahead. All right. Okay, so we quickly start off with the Ratcon. Season 10 started off on the premise that Twilight, uh, Twilight wanted to go explore beyond the quest here to bring more of these uncultural savages into the Empire. <laughs> uh, 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 excuse me, uh, uh, did I say that? Uh, I meant to say to make new friends with new races that they never had contact with before. But instead, we now have a setup that Rarity's group is going there because they received uh, invitations from the Diamond Dogs Kingdom. And uh, here's where we quickly get to the point when I'm starting to get uh, irritated with the way Jeremy did the world building again, as well as the Diamond Dogs retconning. Now, to be fair, this is something I also had a gripe in the Rainbow Dash and Trixie Friends Forever issue, where Dash gets an invitation to Diamond Dog's Kingdom. <coughs> I mean, she's disgusted by the thought of entertaining these barbaric creatures. They explained that the ones that they likely met were outcasts from society. But that didn't really match up with how they were living in a generic medieval city. Yet they're obsessed with gems, which would require, require them to live underground. But to be fair, one thing they did retain from uh, the introduction version of the species was that they are... Um, uh, I'm gonna put this in the gentlest way possible. They were mentally deficient. Although not on the golem level as the first ones, but they still got easily tricked by tricks in Rebel Dash in the end. Same cannot be same, the same cannot be said for these diamond dogs. Not only is their kingdom not underground, which would uh, which would have made uh, a lot more sense if their castle was actually inside the dog-shaped mountain that we saw at the start, but as we see, uh, also, it appears that only men are mentally deficient as they can barely speak comprehensive words, while women seem to be completely fluent. And I'm sitting here going, no, no, Jeremy, don't do another sex superiority allegory like the Dragon Quest did. It was bad enough when you made the racial allegory in the Luna and Spike issue, and even that made no sense. <sighs> yeah. And then Ember says that the other Diamond Dogs were very distant cousins, and this frustrates me because Jeremy's once again doing that thing where he's... Uh, uh, he's been doing it through the whole overarching story to try and not make races outside of Equestria seem as quote-unquote uncultured and barbaric so that it wouldn't seem like the protagonists were colonizers coming to uplift these lesser creatures even though the show never really had that problem although the fandom uh, <laughs> often made jokes about that repeatedly mm -hmm. yeah you do bring up a good point, and yeah, I mean, there there is a lot to point out, and what you mentioned there, yeah, man, yeah. It, it it's a lot of process. Yeah, but also uh, as a little side note, I'm having trouble and problem with Jen saying they're entering an alliance. Um, alliance against what? Are 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 they at war with somebody? Sometimes you don't really need to be at war. Uh, having an alliance before anything or... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Silver? Preemptively? Uh, yeah, it could be yeah. a preemptive alliance. Yeah, 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 but having, that, uh, yeah, but we're talking about, about the preemptive threat that's looming on the horizon. But whenever I hear the word uh, alliance or allies, then I'm, all I'm hearing is war talk. So Not and, and really, it's, it, it's just putting me off though when she says it. No, like I, I mean, partnership that would have made more sense. Partnership is more for business. Uh, two nations being friends. Yeah, you could say being friends, but the official term is alliance. I don't know. I I just feel alliance is more uh, conflict oriented. I, I I think there's a word that's let, said further down the line that fits more the word that I'm looking for. But uh, that's it for now. 
Mm, all right. And Silver, what about you? Well, let's see here. Uh, introducing these dogs, I like the new designs. I like the, the different uh, dog aesthetics. <laughs> many, many different breeds. So I was not one who lamented the loss of the original Diamond Dog looks. I mean, perhaps that's just me, but it's also how I feel. The thing is that these two kingdoms don't have a lot of personality. I mean, even if you look at them, they're just the, sort of a generic castles and a generic fantasy town. There's not even a, an ideological difference between them. So you're left wondering, well, what's the big deal? Why are they like this? And I don't have an answer. <laughs> it's not yet. Uh, and we haven't really gotten into far enough the other side of this debate. They start with the much kinder uh, set of dogs. But here, here's the thing. When Zakura was a guide to her homeland, I think that was the time where you had the most freedom to be as different from Equestria as possible. Because you have this char this main character who is an anchor to what we know. In this case, Sakura. We don't have that anchor here, so having a parallel to Equestria makes more sense here. In this case, a conflict between two royal sisters. But that also means four sisters are superfluous. True. I don't know why we, we why the <coughs> season 10 comics felt they had to have uh, six element of harmony in each case it would actually be fun to have them mix up the numbers because it's trying to show that everybody's equal to ponies that's the only reason they can they can come up with the way it's spring i honestly I, I don't see it that way but it's just trying to get that parallel working because yeah the ponies are six so why not do six it's a gimmick uh with the students six with starlight got lucky her, her team is f five was it let's see uh it's her Mod, trixie, trixie sunburst uh, thorax discord oh well there's six all yeah, right what is it uh mudbriar I mean, if you can, if you include the boyfriend, yeah. But also, there's Discord. Don't forget. Yeah, and Thorax. At least for the first season, uh, for the fifth season. Uh, what was it? What what season was the finale again? <laughs> eight, I guess. Uh, uh, seven. Seven. Eight. It was a student thing, right? Oh god. Yep. <laughs> but anywho. No wait. Seven was the shadow play. It's season six. It's season six finale. Uh, anywho, anywho, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna continue on. So, uh, da, 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 da. Lean was it? Gene. Gene, yes. Gene gives rock to rarity. Rouge the best stole it. All right. So, uh, we get to see the dogs here, kind of enjoying life because, uh. The sister G Lean Jean uh, gave one of the sisters Moon a library that contains a lot of uh, spells and potions to study from. Uh, the other one is the Royal Spa. It was a present to her, and that's kind of awesome. There's a lot of spa things to do there, and the most important one is a school. A royal academy where he, youngins get to learn and stuff. And that poodle there, I'm going to say he's male. Which poodle? <laughs> the oh, the one teaching. Yeah. Yeah. So, anywho. Uh, <coughs> and also, there's a apple farm outside. So, yay, that's cool. <laughs> and Major just pokes Rarity, asks the goddamn question. <laughs> And, okay, Rarity asks, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and the sis, uh, uh, and the princess uh, tells them that that's the other kingdom of Canania. And long story short, they split ways because 
uh, the current queen at the time didn't really want to do things out of uh, respect for tradition uh, because the thing is um, uh, Ember really wants to redecorate the castle but it's not allowed to. Uh, Moon wants to uh, learn about magics and potions but it's not allowed to. And uh, Jean wanted to explore the caves and mine it for resource and it's not allowed to. And because of that uh, they split ways and Jean created her own kingdom where every where she's allowed to do things her way and um, let people explore and bloom out of uh, blossom out of tradition do do things that is not traditional and also Amber has a twin sister oh cool so uh, they decide sorry the ponies decide that ah so okay that's the problem all right cool cool uh you know what we're an expert at getting broken relationship mended so we'll deal with this and they head to the other side of the kingdom and they meet <laughs> true mining card yes uh and they meet up with the other sisters uh we see princess fiona floppy ears and fiona <laughs> and we also uh, are introduced to Princess Indiana Ember Eyes. And uh, Indiana here just says, uh, call us Fiona and uh, Indy for short. Uh, th that's much simpler and whatnot. So we see a pattern here. Mm, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Rarity just says, okay. Uh, we met your other sisters and whatnot, so we're trying to figure things out. Like, yeah. And uh, Indy brings them to the palace. Uh, bring them to meet the queen. And they notice that, oh, wow, this place is dark and gloomy. Um, Have you thought about redecorating and whatnot? And uh, Theo just says, Nah, our sister didn't allow us to do it because of tradition. All right. So we are met with the queen, uh, Katerina Poundpaws. Uh, or you can just call me and Rarity. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, Rarity cuts her off and says, let me guess, call you cat. And everybody, they gasp. Uh, a dog, a cat. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. So she, uh, they are allowed to call her uh, Your Majesty, Your Royal Highness, as per tradition and whatnot. So um, Rarity apologizes, and the princess or uh, the queen dog just says, "Oh yes, mm, okay, uh, all is forgiven." And Rarity starts asking, "Why two kingdoms and whatnot?" And we are then quickly explained that my sister is an idiot because she she's greedy and wants to do things out of tradition. And now that she's dying, it's her fault and I don't care. Turn away. And I, I, I'm going to pause here and hand the floor over to you, Silver. What, what do you think? Well, see, this is a study in contrasts. Uh... Initially, the, the, the queen was so easygoing, Queen Jen, but she's physically frail and ill. Now we go to the hardliners, where you can't, uh, you can't even speak casually. I mean, he's like, let me guess, you cannot. Hmm. Uh, in fact, apparently the word cat is, uh, is forbidden in this realm. Nice. <laughs> oh no, uh, it looks like if Capper comes here, he's not welcome, oh no. Well, is it any wonder that they were at war by the end of the last problem? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. And we have, 
And we have each sister arguing their points on uh, why they should be in charge. Let's see here. Yeah. Let's, let, let's just see here. The princess Catherine, uh, Katharina, rather, she says that Jen uh, ch- made a choice to endanger herself and our sisters. And that's where the loyalty comes in. So this is where I feel like they could have drawn a very large parallel to Celestia and Luna, having very different perspectives but needing to work in harmony. But that conflict renders uh, four out of six princesses obsolete, unnecessary, sidelined. Why you could just as easily replace the their role here with courtiers and you'd be all set. So I'm not seeing why you have to have six diamond dog princesses in this one story. Honestly speaking, Silver, because they're just related and born from the same parents. And if you really think about it, the royal prince of Buckingham, there are, what, three of them? Well, this is double that. (laughs) Also true. But I'd argue... This is an annual. You've only got so much space and one shot to do it. I feel like taking away certain characters gives others more room to shine. True, true. And it's one of those cases where I see your point and I go, you know what? No rebuttal. So that's the stake set up, but now we need to, now I guess it's time to have the summit. The pack is gathering. Yep, yep. And, well, let me continue on. Uh, yes. What about me? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, what about you, man? Well, uh, I noticed that uh, there's <laughs> there seems to be actually uh, an error in the writing when, uh, uh, a bit back, when Amber is crying her heart out about missing her sister. The second, the second half is unreadable. Hmm. Really? Uh, let, let me let me let me uh, read out. No, they're both too stubborn. I used to do everything with my twin sister, but I couldn't be me there, and now she can't visit me here. There's one me too much over there. Oh. All right, all but, right. Yeah, but that aside, uh, <coughs> yeah, this is where uh, when they finally meet the queen. Uh, first of all, I I only noticed it now when I uh, um, read the one speech bubble again. Queen Catherine Proud was regent of Canania. Uh, regent, isn't she a queen? Because a regent would uh, a regent is a person who is appointed to govern the state for. Uh, for a short amount of time, because the <laughs> mon- the monarch is either a minor absent or otherwise unable to discharge power or duties as a monarch. So this uh, makes no sense, what, what she said. <laughs> oh. There's also a North American definition for regent, a member of the governing body of a university or academic institution. <laughs> Turns out this is all one really big college. And this, oh, and this Jesus, is one no of- wonder everything's so messed up. Oh, it, this is just one hell of a hazing ritual for the uh, for the ponies. Uh, it, it could be a party college. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy. yeah, but back to the Pinky point be all over that. All right, but to, to the point that I wanted to make, this is uh, where we suddenly get the disconnect from the main plot, and it doesn't make sense. And this is the word that I wanted to say earlier. Well, Your Majesty wanted to establish a friendly re- relationship between Canania and Equestria. That's the word that's more fitting than the Alliance. But mm. anyway, Catherine apparently just slaps them back. And, well, it doesn't make sense because at the start of the story we were told that the group received an invitation from this kingdom. But now that they're... Uh, in front of the queen, she's being really unreasonable. Like, you're the one who said the damn invitation if you don't want anything to do with the outside world. Why would you send the invitation in the first place? That, that why? Is, because, <laughs> because her rival sister did. 
Mm. And she's like, oh, hell no. Yeah, uh, that, that is also true. That's also true on other accounts. God damn it. Yeah. No, uh, I'm not following the trail of logic. I mean, oh man, like, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I get you. And it is a bit confusing to why the aggression to okay i do understand why the aggression towards the ponies because um rarity slighted her but the whole idea of getting the ponies in to kind of start a relationship is kind of confusing when the most important thing of uh thing to me is the safety of my subjects uh I have five blah 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 protect and I will not be tricked into endangering them simply to make new friends. I mean, like, then why did you send the invitation in the first place? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, oh yeah. yeah. Also, wouldn't wouldn't it be more fun if instead of rarity, Applejack and Applejack was on this mission? And then Amber <laughs> sister's name. Uh, wait, what was her name again? Uh, Princess Fiona Flop years uh, would say that they can call her uh, Fiona. Yeah, that would um, be so much more funny. I I think Applejack <laughs> needed to be with um, Sakura, so the best alternative is Big Mac. But Big Mac doesn't say much. Yeah, we're gonna oh. get to that issue later. Okay. Silver? Going on. Yeah. We gotta move on as things go down. Mm. Like into the mine. Yeah, but before down, that down, down, down into the ground. Yeah, but before that, um uh, Katerina here just tells them like because of her greediness, she could make everybody sick and Mitch Meadowbrook here just says, oh, if they're sick, uh, I can invent a cure. And she, and, and Katerina just says, and how would you do that? Mitch just says, bitch, I'm Mitch Meadowbrook's. Uh, and with that, uh, the queen here just says, oh, okay, um, do what you must. So the ponies mask up and head down to the um, mines. Uh, they're escorted by the queen and sisters. And on the other end, we are also greeted by the other sisters. So the nicer sisters just says, uh, we saw our friends going into the caves and we're here to support them. If they're in trouble, we need to back them up. You're not going to help them if they uh, get into trouble. And harumph. So they head down to the ground. And they, they, they just say like, um, uh, sorry, um, Mage just says, I I'm confident in that between my knowledge of toxins and Mod's knowledge of geology, we'll figure things out. And Mod just says, yep. <laughs> and Big Mac is pissed off because uh, he has copyright on that. <laughs> so it's like, that's my one defining trait, other than being big. And sexy. <laughs> As Sugar Bell. Yep. And you know what? Ask every stallion <laughs> in Equestria. Every stallion? Well, now. <laughs> I've read those stories. <laughs> so, anywho. <laughs> Um, we are in the subterranean level and we discover that the turtles here are chomping on the rocks and Mage tries to carry one of the turtles. Turtles or tortoise, Silver? Uh, well, let's see here. If I believe these are... Tortoise, right? Well, these are called, uh, Carbon Kappa. Carbon Kappa. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, they're, they're a type of Which would be this, right? Well, uh, a Kappa, I think, is a turtle monster. So a Carbon Kappa is mostly turtle-related. Mm, what's car okay. what's a Carbuncle? Carbuncle is... Oh, I this one, I've heard it somewhere. Have you played Final Fantasy? No. Uh, there, there are a lot there, but um, 
while you guys go Google it, I am going to continue on. So, uh, Mage just says, sorry, um, Mod just says, uh, he should be, he's a carbon, uh, carbuncle kappa, and he's been filling up on all of this tasty, uh, gal- galina. And Mage just asks, what the fuck is that? Mod just says, also known as let glance or let sulfid. Uh, it would normally be dangerous unless someone is chomping on it and filling the caves up with lead dust. So, uh, it seems that the... Sorry, it seems that Mott found the answer to what's going on. And Mott's been thinking, 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 and she discovered the problem because uh, Princess uh, Queen Jenna is... Uh, suffering from lead poisoning and she was the one that was digging in the mines, mining those gems and she poisoned herself by being around them on another problem, uh, it seems that with the chomping of the gems or the uh, ground it seems that the structure of the old castle is unstable and it seems that things might go down so on the surface we see that there's a bit of shaking and we see that the other side the nicer side uh, jumps into action because they feel like there's something dangerous going down there and they are going to help uh with Moon, she has magic, so she's prepared to help. Um, I forgot name of princess on the other side. Fiona, was it? Or whatever it is. Uh, one of the twins hit down, and the other twin also joins in. Um, uh, Indy also joins in because, <laughs> uh, well, there, there's a rebellion going on. So... In the case we meet up with the ponies who's trying to decide like oh god this is going this is not going well um the turtles are eating the ground and it's really going to um cause a cave in and collapse the castle into the pits and we see a heroic pose from all six princesses asking them what could they do and we get to see the dogs and pony um, do do stuff. Uh, first they brace the ca- uh, brace some rocks under the castle to make it stable. Uh, we see brute strength, and we see magic working together, and that will keep it up for a while until the ground gives way and cause cause them to fall through. Once they're up we see that they're faced with the Tree of Harmony. And I'm just going to power through because the ground has their faces on it. So you stand here, you stand there. Uh, Only for the two queens, they're not lighting up. And they express how they really feel and apologize to one another. And after they apologize... Uh, they have superpowers now. Yay. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, Jacob, you're around. Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, uh, yeah, I found out the carbuncle thing. Well, uh, from what I see, it's a gemstone in another name for deep <laughs> Almadine gemstone that has been cut with a smooth convex face in a method called Carbochon or mm. Carbocon. Traditionally, the term refers to any red gemstone, most often uh, red garnet. Huh. All right. Although it shares the same li- linguistic origin, this gemstone uh, should not be confused with the medical term carbuncle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, so, yeah. um, comics now. Right. Uh, well, uh, first of all, Indy is apparently the element of truth because she can see in the dark better than anyone else. 
Yeah, then that's how little characterization she gets. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and yeah, at this point, after several issues and only four issues away from ending the series, I think you've probably seen for yourself the constant repeated uh, dimension at the very start uh, uh, of this series. There are six characters. One of the character who. One of the characters who once rejected friendship returned to embrace it, and through that, six of them are empowered by the mystical Magapons. But in this case, the only difference is that there are two of them. Because mm. both queens refused one another because their obsession with their own idea on how things should be run. And, uh, oh yeah, before I go any further, I did forget to mention uh, things before. Like, um, <clears throat> there's something that's actually different compared to uh, what the previous issues have done. Like, there's the main six, ca uh, six cast each having their own team, but unfortunately in the previous ones they were either completely rele uh, relegated to comic relief or they were just downright deterrents to the plot. In this case, there's a, uh, there's something different because Mod is uh, here in this com. Uh, she's a comic relief, but she's also there to discover that the Gem Turtles are the ones destroying the underground, the castle, and they're because they're basically eating lead, which co which caused it to fill the tunnel with the lead dust, and this is how also Mage Meadowbrook discovers that Gem is suffering from the lead poisoning. Although if the Diamond Dogs actually had any doctors, they could have probably figured it out by themselves. And unfortunately, Big Mac is got the short end of the stick because the only thing he's here for comic relief, just like Rockwolf and Tempest, were relegated. Well, Big Mac is Big Mac. He Sad. doesn't talk much. Nope. Yeah, but he also nope, doesn't nope, talk nope, much. Nope. Yep. Yeah. Or, uh, nope. Oh, boys. All right. All right. And okay, this is where I'm starting to have another issue because uh, throughout this uh, story, it's become clear that the established conflict is between progress and tradition. And unfortunately, by the end of the by the end of the story, the pendulum is clearly gonna swing into one, purely in one direction. I mean, the confession by the three, it's clearly trying to establish that both sides are right and wrong at the same time. But by the end, it's clear that they're all siding with progress because tradition is lame. And this is only kind of what I got the problem with, because traditions exist for a reason. Yes, progress is important, but when you're doing progress for the sake of progress alone, then it's not gonna end well, because you'll end up with, uh, I don't know how to put it, corrupt morals. Mm -hmm. Traditions exist for a reason. They're the anchor to the past to make sure we do not forget it. They're the roots from which the future grows. And there has to be a balance between the two, which can be tricky, but unfortunately this comic makes it clear that progress is more important than traditions. And we're not really gonna get any re we're not really getting any reasons why uh, Catherine is so obsessed with them, unfortunately, because th this is more of a one-sided conflict. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anything so, more to add? Yeah. Yeah. Move on. All right. Uh, Silver, what are you? Well, I agree that we are we are encountering the age-old tradition versus progressive, uh, very similar to what. Uh, Starlight and Sunburst had to deal with, with their parent, with the parent map. Uh, honestly, I am wondering if anyone in the group said, "Hey, let's go uh, have a purge of those tortoises <laughs> or turtles." Actually, I did a little search up online, and every tortoise is a turtle, but not every turtle is a tortoise. What's the difference? Well, let's see here. Tortoises are a subset of turtle. Oh. And let's see here. All tortoises are in fact turtles. That is, they belong. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> the most important thing to remember is that about tortoises is that they are exclusively land creatures. Ah, so they don't go in the water as much. Yeah, that, that's how I remember. Much. Yeah, that's, that's how I remember. What tank? So perhaps uh, these are tortoises, but they're they're taking their bond to the land very far, <laughs> very very far. 
subterranean. <clears throat> Anything more to add, Silver? Well, just that it's an annual, and you can only do so much in that space. We're able to have a, a beginning, middle, and end of the story, but we don't get to have a lot of characterization. As such, you have just the briefest of introductions to each of these princesses, and then, bam, got to get right back, got to get into the conflict, got to end it, and we'll see you at the finale for season ten. Hmm. That's it. All right. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it feels like the characters here have a lot of development going on. Like they're 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 characters that we want to know. You know what I mean? Yes. All right. So, anywho, um, let me uh, speed through because this is going to be fun. So, the castle is falling apart. Oh, no. And a part of the castle is going to fall on, on a puppy. Oh, no. Till the queen, Queen Katerina, comes in using her um, magical shield to deflect the falling object. Now, we see that the dogs or the diamond dogs here have magical powers katarina's power is to create a force field or a shield to protect the ones she love and uh, queen jenny uh jen here is to illuminate light for her followers while moon here throws rocks and one of the twins can catch stuff with her ears. Yes. And the other one is Tails. Yep. And Indy here is Cyclops. Yep. <laughs> yep. She's Cyclops. By the way, she looks cool. Badass cool. <laughs> and... With that, the day is safe by the princesses or queens or, or the dogs. <laughs> so, with that, um, Jen here says, uh, I'm, yay, we, we, we did a good job. Woo! Um, you know I'm not moving into your castle, right? And Catherine here says, uh, it's, it's all cool, it's all cool. Um... We, we we don't really you, you don't really need to uh come 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 back but, but I am excited to go to your spa and uh Indy here just says okay um it's cool that we're all back together now but what do we do who's going to be the queen Catherine just have the most fantastic idea and says let's have six queens and the audience yeah. at home is like, what the fuck? Ah, uh, yes. What? That's definitely not going to cause problems. Just like the posing the right of King and have nobody of royal blood replace him isn't going to cause problems on the leaderless nation. But this isn't the real world, so <laughs> whatever. That is also true. So we go to the prologue, mm. yay. So they, they, they build a bridge to kind of symbolize the joining of two nations major um, heals up uh, Jen to health Big Mac misses Apple Bloom and Rarity is writing a letter to Twilight and we discover that oh no another light has popped up and they are calling for a meeting of the Knights of Harmony <gasps> who could they be? Honestly, who, who who are they? I got no idea. I haven't been reading. <coughs> and with that, the comic ends. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, it's an interesting premise, but unfortunately it's overcrowded. And as you rightly point out, six queens is just going to get things in deadlock. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to designate a tiebreaker. Yes. So sort of a vice president almost. But, well, every, everything we've said still holds true. Uh, it's an interesting story. We're given uh, a wide setting, but there's too many 
Well, too many pups in the litter. Mm. Uh, instead of getting to to really explore the arguments for traditionalism or progressivism, we instead have multiple uh, princesses to meet, empower, and elevate to elements of harmony. Now, I will say Rarity and and uh, Mage. Mage Meadowbrook uh, play off one another uh, pretty well, as one is laissez-faire and the other is trying to anticipate while Big Mac and Maud bring more humor with their commentary. Mm-hmm. Though it's funny, if Mage is more traditional in her adventuring, whereas Rarity is progressive in her laissez-faire approach, we never really get to see the strengths and weaknesses of their leadership skills in play. It feels like they're... Um, it feels like their characteristics is kind of put in it was an afterthought and to be honest i didn't really think about them that way too and once it's right? it's taken a while once you mentioned that like oh yeah mages from the past and rarity is all about the future so hmm kind of a missed opportunity if you ask me yeah but this story wasn't about them the last uh, four pound puppies, uh, <laughs> six pound puppies. Yeah, it was. Pound puppy, you're my one and only. It was a surprise, but fun. Thank you, Hesro. <laughs> Yay! Now look for the toys, and then you're in the aisle. <laughs> Wait, are pound puppies owned by Hasbro? Uh, they were one of the few shows that popped up in the hub. Oh. Okay. I'm not 100% sure if they own it, but uh, Toy Rights probably? Anything else? Silver? Who knows? Nah, nothing else. Just that this could have been, with a little pruning of the cast, I think you could have given others more of a chance to shine and to explore conflicting ideas. Unfortunately, for some reason, it's always got to be six. Six shall be the number of elements you shall have, and the number of elements you shall have shall be six. Seven is too many, and eight is right out. <laughs> All righty then. So, Jacob, what about you? Well, I don't know if I can even say anything much. But, uh, yeah, uh, by the end of the comic, this is where we finally realized that uh, we've made an oopsie, because, well, as it was mentioned in the Abyssinia story arc, when we reviewed, like, what, one month, two months ago? Mm-hmm. And you pointed out and pointed out that that there was only one light that wasn't lit yet, and you don't you said you didn't remember that one of the lights was well, it hasn't been activated yet, so there ah. was kind of a timey wimey thing going on. Ah yes, and I asked that, and yeah, I did remember asking that, and you mentioned to me it was in the annual, so it's like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, basically, it's unfortunate that, well, uh, whatever Hasbro's thoughts were on basically ending G- G4 comics as fast as possible, unfortunately, uh, the, this story was cut down and had to go into the annual because they couldn't put it in the main line, apparently. Yeah. Uh, it was 102 chapters and no more. <laughs> yeah, boys. All right. Anywho, um, yeah. as for me, I pff, honestly I like this comic. <laughs> uh, this comic did not frustrate me like the previous one that we did. Um, <laughs> questions arise. That's true, but uh, man, I, I I like the design. I, uh, and it, <laughs> I, I I like the design of the diamond dogs or this version of the diamond dogs and. It gives you ideas of how a Shiba Inu would look like or how a Corgi would look like. So, yeah, I, I, I like the concept of this one. And I do like the quote-unquote progress that the Diamond Dogs are trying to do with them learning magic through enchantments and potions. So, yeah, um, that's something cool to explore in. You know what? I'm just going to shut up on that idea because it doesn't going to exist. 
<sighs> More's the pity. Yep. Yep. It, oh, man, because here's the thing: the, the the only reason why I shut up is because in G five, the dragons are a rare commodity. Like they have been missing. What the fuck did you do, Twilight? A commodity? Uh, why does everyone assume it was Twilight's fault? <sighs> I read the comic silver. <laughs> oh, boys. But yeah, um, putting that aside, uh, the, the design of the characters are memorable as fuck. <laughs> Naming conventions aside, I I do like Indy. Um, I'm guessing she's inspired by a husky. Maybe. Yeah. Really, really like the design. Really like the design. But uh, one one of the few things that's kept from the traditional um, diamond dogs is they have really long and big arms. So yeah, um, that that's something uh, neat to see. Uh, as for their quote unquote power set, I am confused why they got that. What did? Oh, you gotta have really awesome powers. What did the Abyssinian got? Silver, you remember? Let's see, the Abyssinians... They got nothing they, special. They just... Well, uh, okay. Sorry? Well, oh. Big, Big already had uh, super strength explosions. It was uh, the the cat, the black cat. Shadow, if I'm not mistaken. Diamond. Shadow, she she gained magic. Hmm. As they re- restored the Abyssinian magic. But it makes some sense. That's about it, right? Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. yeah. So so basically they're kind of ponies. Um if they can fly, they can fly. If they can do magic, they can do magic. And if you're a normal cat, good luck. <clears throat> yep, yeah, pretty much. Alrighty then. So the dogs are having a better time then. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah, all right. And as Spike Spike recounts getting them to work together, Abyssinians and uh, and Diamond Dogs, it's very difficult. <laughs> Mass hysteria, in fact. Oh no! It's up, down, and down, up. Exactly. Oh, God, no. Black is the new white, and man gets killed at a zebra crossing. <laughs> Alright then, alright then. With that coming again. So yeah, um I like it. Um yeah <laughs> nothing more to add. So anywho. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmission.gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at DMBS Show and my personal Twitter account is at Ramon Santo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and uh, YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. Or just do a search for Silver Quill after the fact. You shall find me. Awesome. And at the tail sure. at the tail end of uh, August, the 26th through 28th, you can find me at Everfree Northwest. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. And if you're going to EFNW, uh, be sure to say hi to Silver and buy his swags. Yes, please. I- I'm sure you have the continuity button, right? Oh, yes. Yay, th- those are fun. Those are fun. Also, uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt uh, under the username Yakafon Torkat, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tremor Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if, in, if you're interested in reading, reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. It's going to be a good read. So anyway, uh, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Uh If you're... If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. 
So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I've been Jakob. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. This comic was a good boy. Well, it's kind of hard to tickle a comic behind the ears. You can try. I know how to do silver. And let me guess, you got a lot of paper cuts doing so. No, no, no. First thing first, you need to give it dog ears. Oh, dear. <laughs> that lowers the collector's value, you fiend! But the book will enjoy it! <laughs> <laughs>